OM Workspace has several powerful editing features to adjust the exposure in post. On top of that, the software can effortlessly recover the full high fidelity dynamic range stored in any OM system RAW file. Let's go beyond moving some sliders and unlock the full potential of OM Workspace. My name is Thomas Eisel, I'm a professional photographer from Vienna, Austria. In this OM Workspace Expert Guide, I will illustrate how to adjust the exposure and how to recover highlights and shadows at the RAW stage. Stay tuned as this will transform the way you process your OM system RAW files forever. The exposure compensation tool in OM Workspace can be found in the basic tab and it's the first item on top. The tool can be set to values ranging from minus 2 to plus 2 EV. Exposure compensation in OM Workspace does not linearly shift the brightness but adjusts image data to ensure a natural color response in the final image. The processing is comparable to exposure adjustments in color darkroom printing. Let me illustrate that with the sample image. Just look at how natural the color and tonal response is when I shift the exposure compensation tool settings. Regardless of setting, exposure compensation will not push tonal information beyond the output range set in the tone curve tool, which is 0 to 255 by default. Instead, the tonal values will be compressed either against the upper or lower output limit. Look at the histogram. I've applied a minus 2 EV adjustment and the tonal values are now concentrated on the left hand side, giving us this low key response. When I move the slider to plus 2 EV, the opposite is the case. The tonal values are now pushed against the upper limit, in this case 255, giving us this high key response. If you make extreme adjustments like pushing an already overexposed file or pulling an already underexposed file, the loaded tonal values are compressed against the upper or lower output values non-linearly. Thanks to this compression, the dynamic range of the photograph is preserved very well. Let me illustrate this compression effect with this sample shot of a test chart. Activating the display highlights function will now show the clipped RGB channels. So it is obvious that some parts of this photograph are already at 255. But what happens when I adjust the exposure compensation? Let's move the slider up to plus 1 EV. Of course, more parts of the image are now clipping. But look at the tonal compression in the histogram. This is not a linear adjustment. By increasing the exposure compensation to plus 2 EV, the compression effect is even more obvious. Look at the histogram and the photograph. The dynamic range is preserved pretty well. If the plus minus 2 range of the exposure adjustment tool is not sufficient, the tone curve tool can be used to increase or decrease the exposure of the photograph. This sample shot was underexposed by minus 3 EV. So even when I bring it up to plus 2 EV in the exposure compensation tool, it is still 1 EV too dark. Let's bring up the tone curve tool, which is also found in the basic tab under tone curve. Simply placing a control point in the middle of the tone curve and moving the point upwards diagonally will bring up the exposure of the photograph. If I would move the control point downwards diagonally, I would darken the image, bringing down the exposure. But of course, in this case, we have to brighten the photograph. And I think this adjustment is about right. A quick tip before we move on, always use the exposure compensation tool if possible. Only utilize the tone curve tool for exposure adjustments if the plus minus 2 EV range is not sufficient. The exposure compensation function of OM Workspace preserves the tonal integrity of the photograph better than the tone curve tool. 
The way OM Workspace handles the captured dynamic range allows for a unique way to recover shadows not to be found in any other RAW editor I know of. The sample photograph for this demonstration is a high dynamic range scene. I've exposed this photograph so that the LED lights on the right hand side just don't clip. But this of course led to an underexposed Nikon D2X on the left hand side. Here is how to fix that in OM Workspace. First, navigate to the gradation tool. You can find it in the basic tab. Set the tool to auto. By doing so, OM Workspace will automatically adjust the tonal values in the photograph, pulling a lot of dynamic range from the shadows into our photograph. The improvement is dramatic. You can also see that in the histogram, now the tonal values are distributed more favorably. Note that setting gradation to auto did not affect any highlights in the photograph. So we did not cause any clipping in the LED by doing that. The next step is bringing up exposure compensation and utilizing the slider to brighten or darken the photograph. Thanks to a key feature of the exposure compensation tool in OM Workspace, namely the tonal compression, we won't clip excessive highlights or shadows by doing that. Nonetheless, you should avoid overcompression as at some point you will lose highlight and shadow fidelity. Just observe the histogram and the photograph itself to avoid any problems. As a last step, we will utilize either the tone curve or the highlight and shadow tool to adjust and fine tune the tonal values in our photograph. In this case, I will utilize the highlight and shadow tool to lower the luminance of the shadows to get more blacks into the Nikon D2X. That's a bit too much. Let's stick with minus three, I'd say. With these three simple steps, we were able to utilize the full dynamic range stored in our OM system RAW file. And the result is truly impressive. With just two editing steps, tonal values in the extreme highlights can be recovered. Of course, you can only recover what was not clipped in the first place. Let's examine our overexposed sample shot here. Of course, the extreme highlights lack tonal separation. Let's zoom in. Yes, we can definitely confirm that. There is almost no tonal separation between the zero and one patch on the grayscale. Step one for fixing this is bringing up the tone curve tool, which is found in the basic tab. I will now lower the extreme highlights with an asymmetric two point curve adjustment. The separation between patch zero and patch one is now drastically improved and I did not crush the tonal integrity of the photograph as a whole. For step two, we need the exposure compensation tool. While lowering the exposure compensation setting, I'm paying close attention to the tonal separation here in the highlights. The trick is not to pick an exposure compensation setting that will ruin the created separation. We just saw a drastic jump in tonal separation here, so let's bring up the exposure compensation a bit. With a setting of 0.9 EV, we get the best tonal separation in the highlights and we even preserved some color information on patch 1. Let's zoom out and I'd say we've successfully recovered the full grayscale of this overexposed sample shot. OM Workspace is an incredibly powerful RAW converter, if you use it to its full potential. For more OM Workspace expert guides, go to my channel and refer to the OM Workspace playlist. Thank you very much for watching. Please consider subscribing and following me on other social media. See you next time.